What is up guys, I'm back with another video. Uh, Chino is still out of town, please come back. Um, so you're just getting the straight uh, recorded from my iPhone videos, like the old school ones. Um, I've been getting a lot of people asking me to record video response or breakdown or, or what have you regarding the new documentary Game Changers on Netflix. Now, I put documentary in air quotes because a documentary is supposed to present both sides of an argument and let the person decide for themselves. Well, this documentary only presents one side of an argument. Now, I have decided I'm going to do a full breakdown of this, um, but it's going to take me some time because there's a lot of claims made, uh, a lot of studies that were cited, uh, a lot of them inappropriate, I would add. And uh, it's just going to take me a while to break it down. But I wanted to address something that came up really quickly in the video. Uh, James Wilkes, who's a former MMA fighter um, who narrates the video, uh, talked about how when he was injured, he did uh, a lot of research research um, about like the best nutrition. Uh, now, he's, he claims he came across a study... Um, that showed that gladiators were vegetarian. What is shown in the video is not actually a study. It was just simply an, a narrative article uh, by a man named Andrew Curry, I believe. Um, so it was based on a um, analysis of stable isotopes from uh, a gravesite in Ephesus. So I actually went and got the actual study from the actual researchers. And um, to say that it's misleading to say that gladiators were vegetarian is uh, putting it lightly. So now what I can say is they did have a plant-heavy diet. That is for sure. However, um, it also depended on the location. This was just one location where uh, gladiators were exhumed. Uh, and so what they found was it really depended on the location what their diet would, it was made up of. Um, in fact, uh, one of the places they looked at was a place called Thebes, or Thebes, I think it's Thebes, um, and showed that based on the sulfur content of those individuals versus the ones at Ephesus, that they actually had a really, uh, they had a diet rich in seafood, which probably makes sense because I believe that one was a little bit closer to the sea and the ocean. So, uh, you know, that's, that's a different group. That's a different place. Uh, just like a lot of people have different diets in different countries, it makes sense that there would be different diets elsewhere. Um, the other thing to note is that they put a lot of emphasis on a strontium-calcium ratio in terms of stable isotopes. Now, in the film... They show um, them kind of burning a small bit of gladiator, I think it's bone, that's been ground up. Uh, and then the flame lights up red, and they say, well, that's strontium. Well, that flame test is actually really... <laughs> the differences in strontium uh, between, these, between herbivores, omnivores, and meat eaters isn't massive. Um, and there's a lot of bleed over. So just to say, oh, it's red, that person must have been vegetarian, um, they could have very easily been omnivorous. Um, and when you're talking about stable isotopes, now this is a much more accurate way to measure things. So what these researchers did was actually very elegant. Uh, stable isotopes are variations of elements that have extra neutrons. So they're heavier than your normal, like for example, calcium or strontium. And so they can be detected on what's called a uh, gas chromatography mass, mass spectroscopy unit. Um, I actually use stable isotopes in a lot of my research on protein metabolism. So it's a, like the methodology, at least from what I can see, is very good. Um, but one of the things to keep in mind is there is uh, problems with soil contamination. In fact, the researchers say, uh, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing the quote here, the significantly lower calcium values in the um, DAM93, which refers to the dig site, 
soil and therefore much higher strontium calcium ratios in this soil raises concerns whether these conditions caused diage diagenetic alterations in the bones at this location, meaning um, there's soil contamination uh, of, of these bones that can happen. So basically, um, I think they said more alkaline soil can cause leaching of more strontium into the bones. And so you could have somebody who didn't have as high intake of strontium, or presumably from plants, and still showed up as strontium heavy due to soil uh, uh, contamination. So it's a possibility. Uh, now, I think the other thing I want to touch on is that even though it seemed they had a plant heavy diet, it definitely seemed like they had some animal products in there based on these ratios. Now, again, plant-based is different than vegetarian. Uh, it certainly doesn't seem they were vegetarian. Did they eat a diet rich in plants? Yes. Um, legumes, beans is what it appears to be. A, they were what was called a gladiator mash that they ate. Um, now, I think what's really important to point out is that uh, gladiators were a low, most gladiators, most gladiators were either slaves or individuals who were convicted of a crime and then made to serve their sentence kind of fighting that they could earn their freedom. Um, and they were a low socioeconomic group. So um, people in low socioeconomic groups in Rome, when they analyzed their bones, had uh, higher strontium to calcium ratios. Whereas individuals in high socioeconomic status uh, had much lower strontium to calcium ratios, indicating that this probably more so points to the fact that plant-based foods were cheap, whereas animal-based foods were expensive. The other thing to keep in mind, and the, the, I can't find a research paper on this, but there were several professors of archeology span who supported this. Um, they said that basically one of the purposes of the, the diets that they were on was to actually increase their body fat levels. Now they weren't, they weren't obese, I don't wanna go there, they weren't obese, but it was not good for them to be lean. Um, so uh, a professor named Kathleen Coleman talked about this, um, and she's from Harvard. Basically, it was good for them to have a layer of body fat because if they had a layer of body fat and they weren't super lean, uh, they could absorb more damage, uh, they could, uh, what they she said, gush blood but not die, uh, nerve endings were less exposed. So by having a layer of body fat, it actually provided them uh, kind of a protective mechanism. So remember that performance in a sport to the death is probably dependent on different factors than performance in other sports like track and field or even MMA where uh, you know, you're not getting cut or you can get cut in MMA, but you're not getting like slashed open. So it looks like one of the purpose of these diets was to actually increase these guys' body fat levels. So to kind of portray it as these, this elite diet that is what the best athletes in the world use, that's a fallacy. And besides all that, who gives a fuck what they did, to be quite honest? Um, we don't have any evidence that they were high-level athletes. Being a really good swordsman or fighter doesn't necessarily mean that you are really fast or really strong, that sort of thing. They were probably more athletic than the average person, but it doesn't mean that they were elite. And trying to draw that conclusion from this study, I think is uh, pretty, pretty nonsensical. So I think the other thing to note is I don't think that vegetarian diets by nature are necessarily fattening. I think that high carbohydrate, high calorie diets are fattening. And an easy way to increase calorie content of a diet is through uh, high carbohydrate diets plant-based, whereas it's hard to do that with animal products because it's much more expensive, especially when you're talking about back in this times uh, when they didn't have the same methods uh, that we have today. All right, guys, I hope that's helpful for you. Uh, make sure to like this video, click links in the description, and I'll catch you next time.